do I breathe? Do I pass out? Do I die? What do I do? It's funny when I go into the labs and they'll be like, are you, you're okay? And I'm like, girl, you could do this arm, this arm, that, 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 this, and that. Like, it's okay. I remember being like, oh no, I'm gaining weight, girl. Get yourself a feeding tube. No, you ain't. Sit down. <laughs> and a code blue was called on me. MRI is going straight to cakewalk. Except if you just had your double lung transplant and you went blind for the medication and then they have to transfer you down to MRI, you are going to be a little nauseous. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Mackenzie. And for today's video, you see it in the title, I'm bringing you guys a part four to my tier list video series. So my last three videos all had to do with TV shows and now I wanna do a little 180 and switch things completely and do something that I've never really seen before here on YouTube and do a little bit more original content. And I was thinking the other day, how can I switch things up and kind of be more original and think of my own idea? And I started thinking, wait, I got it. How about I make a tier list ranking all of the procedures and surgeries that I have done? Because we all know there's a plethora. There's, there's quite a few. So take a seat chill back and let's just get right on into the video. And as always, I always tell you what my tier rankings are called. So let's start with number one, which is Jesus Take the Wheel. I feel like this is very self-explanatory, um, ones that were very, very difficult, and these just make it to the top. And along with it being really hard, I also just had to lean on the big guy. So, there's that. So the second row down is I Need Ativan. And if you guys don't know what Ativan is, it is an anxiety medication that helps control nerves, and just helps you get through things a little better. And I've had to take that a little bit in my day. So I definitely had to include that. And it's just a step below, like you don't need Jesus, but you need some medication. I needed the uh, Ativan in the cabinet, you know? Third row down is fine, but I never want to do it again. It's fine, but it's uncomfortable, and I don't really ever want to do this again. I mean, I never want to do any of this again, but like, but there's certain things that are way, way easier than the other ones. And that takes us to our last category, which is cakewalk. I have a few procedures, a few, that were just a piece of cake and you know, you're in and done. So let's get right on in to the video with the first procedure, which is CAT scan. Okay, so with CAT scan, CAT scans are honestly, I would put a CAT scan in cakewalk. I feel like if you've ever had one before, they really are very easy and simple compared to other things you can get done. So you really just go in, lay in the cylinder tube, and they just take some deeper imaging that x-rays might not be able to pick up. It's really not that difficult. So that's definitely going in cakewalk. So the next procedure is pick lines. So if you guys don't know what pick lines are, it is a form of longer acting IV medication. So what it is, it's a longer, I, I didn't know I was having health class today. I didn't prepare myself to explain these things. It's a longer IV that extends, it goes in through the arm right here and it goes up and it kind of wraps around your heart and it stops around here. Just a big long IV and it's meant for a longer stay than the IV. IVs usually can stay until like one to two days. Um, a pig line can stay into, I think, three to six weeks, I'm pretty sure. And um, it just, like, when you have cystic fibrosis, you have frequent exacerbation, so you have frequent infection in the lungs and things like that. But getting the pig lines put in. So, when I was, I was nine years old when I got my first pig line ever put in, and I was put to sleep because I was younger. And when you're a kid, you get sedated a little bit. Um, and then as I got older, they do pick lines bedsides. Up until I think 2018, I would have put pick line in cakewalk. And then this, this crazy day, this crazy time one time, um, I don't know what happened. I don't know. She was putting the pick line in me as always, you know, it starts right here and I started to feel like it's called coiling. Sometimes when you're putting in a pick line, it can coil around your armpit. And she was trying to push it in and I'm like, it's not going. Um, and I'm, you know, fully awake. I'm like ready. I'm like, this is so, such a breeze. Um, and she is like going and it's not working and she's kind of like pushing it. And I'm laying flat. When all of a sudden, I go, oh, it's getting a little dark. Oh, 
Oh, it's dark. Oh, it's, I see stars. I can't breathe. <laughs> like I said that, like it all happened so fast, but I remember saying those things and a code blue was called on me. Uh, um, really bad, really bad. If you guys don't know a code blue, it's like someone stops breathing. Um, so I can look back and like talk about these things better now, but wow. Um, crazy. So I just remember, I don't, I still don't know to this day, like what happened. Um, I like don't know. <laughs> but after that, I said, hey, can I have the Ativan? <laughs> so I'm going to put pick lines in I need Ativan because after that day, if I ever need a pick line again and every pick line since then, I request Ativan. So I'm just a little drugged up on Ativan. Just a little. Nothing major. <laughs> I say, you know, um, I just need a little bit of a calmer because I think I'm going to go black again. But to this day, I like don't know what happened. I just remember being like, oh, I'm going out. <laughs> like I was just like, I, I'm passing out. I don't know what, I don't know if she pushed on a nerve. Like I don't know. It might've had to do with the fact that I just had anxiety so bad from sh like it getting stuck that I think maybe I freaked myself out and my heart rate got too high. Like, I don't know. I was laying flat. Like, it could have had something to do with my breathing. Like, I don't know. But I need I need a freaking Ativan, please. Okay, next procedure, manometry. When I tell you, Satan himself created such a thing. Should she suffer? All right, clap if you think she should suffer. Before I even discuss, it's going right up to Jesus. Take the mother effing wheel. Um, manometry, if you guys don't know what that is, um, this is part of the transplant workup that I had to do. I didn't know it was gonna be this crazy uh, experience that I would hold on to forever. So it is a swallowing exam. It measures your swallowing and your throat muscles and your swallowing muscle for when you have to get um, intubated to have a transplant. Um, what I didn't know is that you'd be wide awake and they're putting a tube in your nose. Yeah. So they start with this little skinny thing. I'm like, okay, it was bad, but I got through it. I was crying. I was crying. And if you know me, I don't really cry at things like this just because this has been my life. Okay, so they put it down your nose, this like skinny tube. They put it down your nose and you have to swallow <laughs> as it's going down but you also have to simultaneously I can't even say that word I'm sorry but you also have to breathe at the same time which is fine because they're not putting it down your windpipe but it feels like they are so you're like do I breathe do I pass out do I die what do I do so you're just like in your head the whole time as they're putting it down and I, she finally did it oh that was I'm like envisioning it and I never like I have said a step down from the actual transplant like I'm not it was so bad it was so bad so bad and I'm sorry if you're watching this and you um are gonna have to do manometry Maybe there's a better way now. Like maybe they've came up with something, I don't know, because you have to swallow because it measures the swallowing muscle. So I don't know, but it was crazy. And then you have to leave it in for 24 hours because then once it is in, you have to leave it in and record your acid reflux because it makes sure that you know your acid reflux levels aren't at a dangerous level for surgery because when you are intubated and asleep for that long, um, aspirating and everything like that can really, really damage the lungs before you even get to use them and it's just a whole mess so they have to make sure you're all set and complete for the lungs. How I said they use the little skinny tube and I was like, okay, they're finally done. This girl pulls out a garden hose. Like I'm not, I'm not kidding. A garden hose, like not, but like whatever. Um, <laughs> down. I was crying. I, I was like, I can't, I can't. Like I can't. I was like, how do you even do? It was the worst thing to ever, ever, ever exist. Like I don't know why they can't come up with a better method. It's horrible. It's horrible, horrible, horrible. Jesus, take the wheel times million. So the next one is kidney dialysis. So if you don't know, I was 10 years old in the hospital actually going home on IV medication. So I had a pick line and I was on it for three weeks. And I think it was the second week that I was on it. I was just doing the regular medication. My parents were giving me uh, the medication through the pick line. 
and um, one night I just did not feel good I went to bed not feeling good and I woke up to like actively trying to throw up um, and I threw up like as soon as I opened my eyes I just threw up and then like had a hundred or four fever chills the whole the whole thing so they knew something was up and I went to the hospital my creatinine level was at 12 and if you know where the levels are supposed to be at the levels are supposed to be under one so got a little crazy um so I ended up in acute kidney failure and I had to do dialysis for three weeks and it's so weird because I was 10 years old so looking back at that I don't remember too much um but i feel like i am gonna put it in jesus take the wheel because i can't believe i was 10 years old doing that i'm very very glad to say now that i have 100 percent kidney function back and now everything is great but that was like a really really crazy time and when i think about that i can't believe like i had to do that so weird okay next procedure is bone density so bone density scan you just go in you kind of just literally just get a scan of your bone density and this is because with cystic fibrosis you are more prone to osteoporosis and arthritis and things such as that so you have to get a bone density scan every five years i'm pretty sure when you have cf starting at the age of 17. um and i honestly would put bone density scan in cakewalk it's kind of uncomfortable because you have to keep your knees really straight and for some reason i get in my head when my knees are laying straight on the table like i'm gonna like pop out a kneecap or something like i don't know that's just me because i'm weird but i'm not gonna put it in fine but i never want to do it again because i know that i will have to do it again like many many more times so i'm just gonna put it in cakewalk but know that it is a little uncomfy but honestly like it's fine compared to the other things you know so the next one is echocardiogram. So echocardiograms are basically a sonogram of your heart and all the chambers and all the things that work with the heart. So after I had COVID, I had to get an echocardiogram and I also think I got an echocardiogram for workup for transplant. Woo! I think I'm gonna put echocardiogram in fine, but I never wanna do it again because it was, ex it's extremely uncomfortable. I actually talked about this after my, co like when I did my COVID exam um, updates. I talked about how when you get a sonogram of your heart, they have to push kind of on your chest wall right here because it's where your heart is. Um, but it's just uncomfortable because they like push on your chest bone and you're like, Ugh. like the whole time you're just kind of cringing because you're like, this kind of freaks me out. I don't know. I'm weird again. Um, but I'm just, I'm going to put it in fine, but I never want to do it again. Okay. Next one is neck shunt. So I actually should be neck shunts because I've had two. I had one for kidney dialysis. So how I got hooked up to the kidney dialysis machine was a catheter placed in the neck. So I have two scars. I don't know if you guys can see, but I have two scars right here and right here. And it's basically, it's like a catheter and you hook up to the machine. So it was like the little tube stuck out like this. Oh, yes, <laughs> it stuck out like this. It was connected and then during transplant I had to have a heart catheter placed and that starts at the neck so I had another shunt in place again um, I feel like I would put heart or neck shunts um, in fine but I never want to do it again because I was asleep when all these things were put in so I didn't experience you know the the process of putting it I didn't experience the process of putting it in but it's uncomfortable to have a heavy tube sticking out when you are like once it's put in in your wake that's a little freaky too i don't know it just kind of freaks you out a little bit okay and next procedure is sleep so the next procedure is a sleep study so i actually got a sleep study done back in i think april of 2019 so i had to get a sleep study because i my oxygen was dropping when i was sleeping and they wanted to make sure they wanted to measure my co2 levels and everything and my actual o2 levels and everything while i was sleeping so i went to a place near home and slept there and got a full exam and then i got home and i never got a call of the results and then eventually my mom and i like called we're like what what were the results they were like oh we ended up not having the co2 levels put on there and i'm like okay like 
Oh, okay. Uh, so I never got, I'm like, I never got one again. Um, but honestly, I would do sleep study in a cakewalk, actually. I was gonna say fine and never wanna do it again, but I actually do wanna do a sleep study because I wanna do a dream study, like, a, not like health purposes, but just because my dreams are so crazy. I just wanna know more about my sleep and why I have these crazy dreams. Like, I just wanna know. So I'm gonna put that in cakewalk. The next procedure is G-tube. So I got a feeding tube placed six to seven months before I had my transplant and it literally saved my life and carried me to my surgery. I was 78 pounds at 20 years old. So really, really crazy. Um, and I remember being like, oh no, I'm gaining weight. Girl, get yourself a feeding tube. No, you ain't. Sit down. <laughs> I kind of, I, I think I'm going to put it in I need Ativan because I was really, really nervous for it. But then afterwards, the... The recovery is like I needed some meds, some medication, because that was probably one of the most painful recoveries over, well, transplant was bad, but like over anything else, the painful recovery was the G-tube because you don't realize how much you use your ab muscles until they're cut into, and it was just like you can't, also, when you have cystic fibrosis, and especially at end-stage lung disease, you are coughing non-stop. So, like, coughing and healing, like, it just wasn't, <laughs> was not, it was not ideal. So, definitely going in, I need Ativan. But, the G-tube itself, like, saved me so much. I literally didn't even put on weight, but it kept me stable. So next procedure is PFT. So this stands for pulmonary function test. People with cystic fibrosis or any type of breathing condition, or maybe if you work in a PFT lab, if you are a doctor, I feel like even firemen, a lot of nurses have to get a pulmonary function test done um, for some of their exams for work. I don't really know, but I've heard like of people having to get those done. But I have had pulmonary function tests done my entire life. I, I can't even count how many I've had done. Um, and they have always given me anxiety. Even now, when I go into the PFT lab, I know that I'm gonna blow a good number, but my body is so trained for the worse, and my mind tells me, and I also have dreams about myself blowing a low number, so I go in there like, great. Um, but honestly, I'm gonna put it in I need Ativan because I get the worst anxiety ever trying to do a freaking PFT and like I'm literally a girl you are good you are good you are safe we are good we are good you're safe like a definitely a PTSD thing for sure okay. next one MRI MRI is going straight to cakewalk but I will explain a time where it wasn't a cakewalk at all one second <laughs> A lot of people have gotten an MRI in their life and it's just louder so a CAT scan or a MRI does it like doom, 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 and it is like really loud it's also longer than a CAT scan definitely longer more intense but it's still in the grand scheme of things not bad except if you just had your double lung transplant and you went blind for the medication and then they have to transfer you down to MRI you are gonna be a little nauseous and it's definitely gonna be like Jesus take the wheel situation but other than that hypothetical scenario um cakewalk no like for real like, you, the world was spinning the world was shaken okay the next procedure is labs so i get labs done so many times you know like here's here's my arm not hard at all cakewalk i mean i get i've gotten labs done my whole life it's funny when i go into the labs and they'll be like are you you're okay and i'm like girl you could do this arm, this arm, that, 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 this, and that. Like, it's okay. Like, we just want to make sure you're not going to pass out. I'm like, you might have to worry about Susie and Sally and Jim over there, but you, you don't got to worry about me. Next one is tunnel pick. So this is basically a pick line, except it goes right here. And it is safer, and you can also leave this in to even a year long. So I've had, I think, three tunnel picks. It's like the next step until you get a port which i never got a port before transplant which is kind of crazy but um so like when you get pig lines you get them in your arms right here and right here and eventually it just kind of you use all your veins and then they don't work anymore so you have to move to a tunnel pick or a port so i've just always done tunnel picks tunnel picks you do have to be under twilight so you are sedated um but it's you know it's really not it's not i would put I would put tunnel pick probably in I need Ativan because it's similar to pick lines, except you are put to sleep. So you basically, you basically do. 
you have a little bit of a little help there. Next one is arterial blood gas. So arterial blood gas are given during the six minute walk test during the transplant workup. So what an arterial gas does is you do your six minute walk test and then you come back, at least this is what I did. So I did my six minute walk test, you know, you just walk back for six minutes, um, I have my oxygen on and you go and sit down and you have to take the oxygen off. I about checked out. Um, I remember being like, wait, <laughs> my head was so heavy. Everything was spinning. Cause I like, I'm like, hello, my, I like can't breathe. They have to do it like that because they take it out and then they put a IV right in here and it measures the intake. What is it? The intake of oxygen versus the breathing out of the CO2 and it measures the levels and gets you a score and that all goes to your allocation score to be put on the transplant list. So it all just works together, but that was not fun. It hurt really bad right here. It hurts really bad. You're just like, I don't even care. Do anything you want because I'm just like tired, you know? So I'm gonna put arterial blood gas in. I feel like I'm just gonna put it in fine, but I never wanna do it again because like it's whatever at this point, you know, like it's not, it's just an IV at the end of the day, so I'm just gonna say fine, but I never wanna do that ever again. <laughs> Next one is bronchoscopy. Okay, so bronchoscopy is when they put you to sleep, put you under sedatives, sedatives, sedatives? They sedate you. <laughs> they, put a tube, they put a tube down your throat and they go down with a little camera and they search for your lungs and they go in and they kind of do different lobes of the lungs. So like every time it's a little different, like maybe you have your right lobe looked at, your left lobe, your upper right lobe, your lower left lobe, like it's always different. Um, but they take the tube down and it has a little camera and they find a little tiny piece of your lung and they do a biopsy of it and then they let you know if you have any acute rejection, chronic rejection, infections, um, any fungus, anything of the unordinary that is growing in your lungs. And you have to get, like I think I got about like six of those within the first year of transplant. And then after the first year, you don't get them anymore unless needed. Be put to sleep was kind of relaxing, but I did get really, really nervous and in my head before, but it always ended up being fine. And then afterwards I'm like either really hungry because I didn't eat at all, and sometimes the procedure would go to like 2 p.m. and you'd be waiting and my and my appointments start at 7.30. So like sometimes you'd be waiting all day, you're starving and you get up or you like don't wake up, you're so tired. Like you just keep sleep, like they take you home but you just like keep sleeping. Isn't the worst thing ever, like I've done worse. So definitely going in the I need Advan. But I do wanna say one time I did have a really weird bronchoscopy experience because it was during COVID time and Usually they would just give you twilight, but for this specific time within the COVID world, it was 2020, I had to get a bronchoscopy and they had to do a full sedated moment and put the tube down. And I remember I wasn't fully asleep yet. And so I, I like remember feeling like I was drowning a little bit. I know it sounds really scary. So yeah, just that one time, I don't know what happened. It was really, really weird. But and also right before they spray lidocaine spray in your mouth and it coats your mouth and your throat and you kind of feel like you can't swallow for a second, you're totally fine, but you do kind of feel like you can't swallow for a second. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> okay, sometimes I like think about all the stuff I've done and I'm just like, what? Next one, EKG. EKGs are cakewalk every single time. Next one, the big daddy of them all. The double lung transplant, going straight up to Jesus, take the wheel. I feel like that's just, that's a given. Um, what if I was like cakewalk? Um, that was like the craziest time of my life. I don't, I don't even know. It was weird because like I said, you're just so tired at that point um, that you are just rolling with the punches. And I, like for me, I just smiled and just said, okay. Like, and you just get calm because there's nothing else you can do. You have to fully surrender yourself to what is happening because there's literally nothing else you can do. So actually for this one, Jesus take the wheel and he did and he, and I'm here three years later. So thank you, Jesus. pH probe with Bravo. I think that's what it's called, but it is another acid reflux study, except it was after transplant and they sedate you. So, like, I didn't experience anything. Your 
Tell me about your past, thinking your future was me. And I know it's so garden. So, I mean, this is like probably fine, but I never want to do it again because it did give me like a little bit of anxiety because I just think anytime I'm going to be under twilight, sedated, whatever, it's going to give me a little bit of anxiety just because it just is anxiety inducing. Oh, I have two neck shunts. Okay, well, we're not going to use that one. Hold on. <laughs> That's my doctor calling now. Six twenty three ninety nine. You're welcome. Have a good mm -hmm. weekend. You too. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Why is it always awkward at the end of the phone conversation? Like you're like, do I say bye now? Right heart catheter. So I had to get a right heart catheter placement. Um, right before transplant, it was another thing for workup. I had to do so much for workup. Uh, it's stuck on the skin. That's gonna really do some damage. Ooh. Okay. Because <laughs> that's the placement that they're going to use for surgery. A lot of people, a lot of times, they go into a lung transplant and then they realize that the heart is not healthy enough to withstand the surgery and then things go wrong. So they have figured out over the years and that's why so many people make it through surgery nowadays and a lot of things are more successful is because they're just figuring out more and more and more. I want to say the right heart cath is going to go in I Need Ativan because I remember I got in there and the doctors were so cool. They were like, what kind of music do you want to play? So of course, right away, I felt, oh my God, this is like a really good environment. Like I feel really comfortable. And I was like, so play some Luke Combs. I remember saying that and they're like, okay. And they, they were playing Luke Combs and singing as he's like cut the slice a little bit. And it was kind of weird, but like, oh, I, so I guess I have three. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> um, and they slice a little bit and then kind of like and weed the catheter in. As they're doing that, there was some moments that felt really weird. Because they're like tugging at your heart. It induces weird rhythms to the heart. And sometimes it would feel like my heart, this is really weird. At some points it would feel like the heart was falling down into your stomach. Ugh. But I remember being like comfortable at the same time, for some reason really calm about it, but at the same time being like, ooh, I don't, I don't like that. Like, it's really, really weird. Cause like I said, it induces weird rhythms and weird jumps and like skip beats. And it, it just feels so, Weird. So next one, six minute walk test. I kind of talked about this earlier with the arterial gas, but six minute walk test. I just had one done actually. Um, it's a breeze, except when you have 19% lung function and you have oxygen, you have to do the arterial gas. You know, post transplant, it was a breeze, and then pre transplant, it's um, I'm gonna I'm gonna overall just put it on fine. It's honestly a cakewalk. I feel like I'm gonna have to do it again at some point, so I'm just gonna put it on cakewalk. What is this? Oh, next one, glucose tolerance test. If you've ever been pregnant, every pregnant person gets the glucose test done to check for gestational diabetes and um, because a lot of times when you're pregnant, it can affect your blood sugar levels and it can make you have to be on insulin just for the time being of being pregnant. Or if you are already a diabetic, you know what a glucose tolerance test, you um, just take a, you take a drink of this flat orange or grape or whatever type of soda and then you wait two hours you don't eat anything um, and they measure your blood sugar levels and then you kind of do something else you do like this whole long day test um, honestly it's a cakewalk I've had a lot of them done I've had a lot of them done just for CF um, yeah I feel like it's cakewalk and I always enjoyed the pop because I'm weird last and final one is kidney biopsy so when I had dialysis and kidney failure and I went through all of that they also had to do a mini procedure where they just cut a little 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 tiny sliver in my back and just took like the tiniest mo molecule of my kidney just to kind of do a biopsy of it and kind of figure out like it just all went in that time of life so but I'm just honestly I'm gonna put that in I'm gonna put it in I need Ativan because I feel like anything like that is just gonna give me anxiety and I'm also looking at my list and I see that neck shunt is at fine, but I never want to do it again. I'm switching that. <laughs> I'm going to put that in I need Ativan because I don't know why I thought, yeah, like I definitely need Ativan for the neck shunt. But that is all of my procedures, all of my surgeries. If you're in my family or you know any that I missed, let me know in the comments down below because I have had a lot done and I might have 
missed something. Today's subscriber shout out goes to William Chester. He is a fellow lung transplant recipient just as I am. We talk, we're friends, and thank you so much for subscribing and always commenting on my videos and always interacting with my stuff. It means a lot to me and I love all of you guys and all of you subscribers and um, the recent new subscribers, hi, welcome, and I hope you stick around. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share for more content. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye, guys.